How many takes do you think this took to get right? Now, how many takes do you think this took? And what about this one? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, quite a few takes. <laughs> so I'm in the studio and I currently have the place to myself. So I'm free to try stuff out, have some fun and make many mistakes. But what if I had an audience? Would I be able to perform with the presence of real people? Henry Ford once said that under pressure, the mouth speaks when the brain is disengaged. And sometimes unwittingly, the gear shift is in reverse when it should be in neutral. Performing live is a rush, but stage fright is a very common problem musicians have to face. Some learn to overcome it, and some never get over it. Meg White of the White Stripes quit playing music because she couldn't handle the sickness she felt before playing. Adele says she's frequently sick before she has to go on stage. Even the virtuoso pianist and composer Frédéric Chopin once wrote, I am not fitted to give concerts. The audience intimidates me. I feel choked by its breath, paralyzed by its curious glances. I've seen various comments across multiple music YouTuber channels stating that YouTube musicians can't play live and that by not selling out stadiums or having traditional careers, they're frauds, that it's all in the editing or that being able to do multiple takes somehow negates the musicianship involved in playing a complex piece. And it's true, making videos and performing live are two very different beasts. So I never really could play live, uh, except for these world tours I did in the 80s with my buddy Rick Springfield, and this was actually Live Aid. When playing live, you need to be rehearsed and ready to improvise, adjust and deal with whatever comes your way. When you hear that crowd and know you're almost going on, you're going to experience a huge adrenaline rush and it may make your hands shake, you might feel sick with nerves, but mistakes happen and are mostly forgiven by the audience depending on your own reaction to said mistake. If you can keep the energy up in the room and ride it out, you'll have a successful performance. None of that with a video, of course, when you're just alone in a room with a camera, but there's a different kind of pressure. It has to almost be a perfect take because it's going to be replayed over and over and you want to be proud of it. You can't get away with any sloppiness because people will notice and won't hold back in letting you know. Hey, my name is Adam Neely and I've never played live before in my entire life. When I play songs on my channel, I get the performance in one take. So you see it as close to a live performance as possible because although it's video, I don't want to pull too many tricks because then you'd only be disappointed when you do see me play live. Um, check out the link below and tell me which city you're in so I can come and play a show in your town. For some videos, especially collaborations, it's a little more complicated and there's usually a time pressure. Sultans of Swing with Josh Turner, for instance, which has just gone over 1.5 million views, took about 14 takes to absolutely nail for a few reasons. Josh's wife, Kelly, was also rehearsing her camera moves, which was rather important. And we used the early takes as our actual rehearsal. But then the song is almost seven minutes long. And well, Sultans of Swing is a precious song. You want to do your best, but those hand stretches get tiring, um, especially after over 90 minutes of playing. And then you're more likely to make mistakes because you're kind of in pain. And the more you play it and everything and you get in your head, the nuances of your facial expressions are a lot more visible on camera. So when you start getting a little worried, you need to actually act and hold composure. Then there's the celebration when you finally get the one. It's a buzz. So although a different kind of pressure to playing live, it's pressure nonetheless, which is then met with relief once you've cracked it. Actually, a huge piece of advice for improving as a musician is to film yourself. You'll notice bad habits and hear things in a different way, which will allow you to make changes. I definitely can't play live. I've, I've never been on a stage. I've never actually left the studio. So. I've grouped YouTube musicians into three types. Firstly, there's the one who doesn't want to play live at all and just prefers to solely concentrate on making videos, which is completely fair. It's an art form unto itself. And actually, you'll find a lot of musicians who hate making videos and performing on camera because they find it too challenging, especially when it comes to filming themselves, lighting themselves, 
getting used to all the tech and editing themselves. Then there's the criticism that comes in waves once you start reaching an audience, because the comment section is a little more unforgiving sometimes than that of a live audience. People can hide online, and maybe the same people would be too embarrassed to heckle and draw attention to themselves in a live crowd. Secondly, there's the live musician who doesn't want to tour the world anymore and prefers to live a slightly more normal life with a routine, so they turn to the working from home benefits of YouTube. And finally, there's the budding musician who wants to grow a fan base by being online so that it translates to a live audience, even if it's a small portion of those who watch the videos. I count myself in this group. I've played my friend's weddings this summer and a few open mics, but my last official gig was December 14th, 2019. But I'm pleased to say that I'm making a return to live music with two shows on the horizon, more being planned, and playing a sold out show at The Garage in London with Josh Turner and Raina Del Cid at the end of September followed by a headline show at the Louisiana in my old hometown of Bristol. That is on the 31st of October. This is an entirely DIY operation. I'm not working with any promoters for my future shows and I want to avoid any external pressures from other companies. So I'm just hiring the venues myself. So it's entirely fan powered. I am nervous, but I'm also very excited. We've sold half the tickets so far with over two months to go. So if you're based in the UK, I would love for you to join me in Bristol. In summary, YouTube musicians are a new breed who have the freedom and flexibility to perform however they like and play to their strengths. And actually it gives you the viewer the ability to watch and gain insight from musicians who were so often lost in the traditional music industry. We might not be selling out stadiums just yet because we don't have the infrastructure major label rock and pop bands have, but just give us some time who knows who'll come up through these platforms? I've still got my eye on Wembley Stadium too, so we'll see. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I really, really appreciate it. Subscribe to Rachel, Tim and Adam. I loved their contributions to this video. And just FYI, they're all amazing live musicians, very well versed in that sector. I know it's a cliche, but if you aren't subscribed yet, then please do. It'd be amazing if you could click that button. It's totally free and really helps me out. Another thing that's free is signing up to my newsletter. Check out the link in the description below. Then if you're feeling super generous, check out my online courses and my Patreon page as they're how I support this channel. But as always, I'll be seeing you very, very soon. And these days I absolutely can't play live except every couple of weeks I... I guess I do play live on YouTube. Actually, a lot of these are, well, a lot of them are bigger than the Live Aid gig. So. I just sit here most days and make YouTube videos. I don't really set up any gear. I, I've never programmed an Ableton set. Hey, my name is Adam Neely, and you're watching Mary Spender's YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy.